stuff that I'm going to be talking about is from Akios. Some of it, most of it isn't. It's just the stuff I bought in tackle shops when I've been going out and about. I didn't know exactly what I needed until I started to do my own fishing. Because the way some people fish and the way I fish are completely different and opposed to each other. What I find enjoyable, they may find enjoyable. For instance, I have no interest in conger eels. A few of them want to do conger fishing, absolutely not. No interest in congers. If we've got a conger, it's by accident. I don't want conger eels. So, I won't be buying that kind of stuff. Boat fishing. I'd like to do at some point, if I get the opportunity, if I get invited to do some boat fishing, I'd love to do that as well. That'd be fun. But until that point, I don't need to buy that tackle. Feathers and that kind of thing, I've ordered them myself. And what I'm going to do, without prattling on too much, I'm going to talk now about the stuff and my conclusions that I needed. So, without any further ado, or ado, whichever way you want to say that, I'm going to talk now roughly about the stuff that I've got. The stuff that I decided was important to me for my style of fishing. Firstly, we're fishing off a beach. By accident, sheer accident, I ordered off eBay a Daiwa tripod. And he ended up getting this sent out to me accidentally, which was a, an Ian Gold's 7 foot super match. Which was there, there. This was 54 quid delivered. I know the dearer when you look online, but that's what I opted for first to put my, my rods and reels on. Illuminated cups and holders, fully adjustable with these little bars here that lock the, the pod off it in place. A bait holder. This was imperative to me because I realised very quickly that when you've not got rigs out in the water you're not fishing. And when you've got such a short time to fish, so, so for instance some venues it could be half an hour on the flood, which is the water coming in on the tide, on low tide for instance, and then leaving on a high tide, you've got half an hour, two hours, depending on how you're going to be fishing on each venue, so time's limited. So I'll explain on that. I found, for instance, on Perch Rock, you've got two hours on the, on the uh, as it's leaving, as it's going, right, to low tide. At low tide, it's slack water for about an hour, two hours, which means that the broad tip's not bouncing about all over the place. And then it starts to flood. You've got half an hour on the flood to an hour. After that, the tide gets that strong, you can't hold the bottom with the big lead. So I decided that I needed to make sure that bait was pre presented and hung on this thing nice and easy. So that clips on the front there. Okay, that's that. So that's that. I needed that. For most of my sessions, for the first two or three weeks, I'm preparing all my bait on the floor. With a knife, you need a knife. And you need a cool bag to store your bait in. Because the bait gets pretty yucky and you need to make sure that you've got a cool bag to put your bait in. Now, Richard, one of my friends, showed me his bait bag. This now actually stinks. And it then showed me to put buckets in. So you need little, I would call them buckets, sandwich boxes to put the frozen bait in. You need a, cook it, a cutting board and then you need rigs, right? Ready tied rigs. So first and foremost, I realized very quickly that I needed some form of tray or device to fit into the pod here, the tripod. So by buying this, this is the Tronix Pro, £14.99 off eBay, or you can buy them in tackle shops. This attaches to the legs, and it's really easy to put together. It attaches onto there, and I clip it on, and then it attaches here. So it sits in between the legs of the tripod, okay, just there like so. Let's put that down past there. Right, and with that being down there, on here, it means that I can actually work with my bits and pieces in a nice safe place, like so. That made my fishing a hundred times better by having that in place, so I could have a chopping board on there. A 
could melt my ma knife. Now this is a fladden knife. This was actually sent to me a few years ago to do a TV programme with Sean Wilson, Martin Plow, Coronation Street, um, for a, a TV programme that got commissioned then decommissioned. So this knife came in handy, it didn't cost me anything, but that's a filleting knife from Fladden Tackle, which comes there. That is a brilliant bit of kit for filleting your fish, so you need a good solid knife for filleting your fish. So I'll do a video on, on that, so there's loads of content that I can create on these videos. So I'll clip that knife up on the tripod, free hanging, there. So I've always got access to a knife, it's not rolling about. Now, the reason why I use this tripod is because when you're chasing the tide on the flood or on the retreat of the tide, you can pick your tripod up, move it wherever it needs to go, but all your kit is staying in one place. I'll move that over there now. The next bit of kit, which I noticed straight away, which was a tackle box. You wanted all your bits and pieces in your tackle box. Now I thought, why are they using a really old design of tackle box, which has been around for years. When I first started fishing, many years ago on my own 16 years of age on my own without adults with me um, i always wanted one of these and it's a plastic tackle box but the plastic tackle box to come into its own within sea fishing this is what i'm talking about you can get them various different makes make them it's a big plastic tackle box as you can see there and also on the back it's got a shoulder mount that's on the back so you can actually adjust that to fit the back here and it attaches right straight on the back here so you carry it like a rucksack now that that bit of kit there is made from breakaway tackle not sponsored by breakaway tackle but that bolts on to this kind of a box this one here is Daiwa box which you can see there you can get other ones as well you so you can get like Shakespeare um, Drenum, there's loads of plastic tackle boxes but why do you need that kind of a tackle box? You could use a rucksack, a waterproof rucksack and I see guys using that for mobility but for the kind of fishing that suits my needs that there can be put down in water with my, with my tripod and the plastic tackle box it means that everything stays dry and with having this on the actual tripod here as well like I spoke about before it keeps everything out of the water for the kind of fishing and the situations that I get into now while you're in this it's a very good tip to buy these things or you can make them yourself quite easily these are little hook retainers so I like to fish with a panel rig which is there two hooks a lot of guys like to fish with one like an O3 that's my specific choice and it will change as time goes by and I use on my hook links I use um, amnesia and I use a good swivel now on a panel the panel moves up and down and that just attaches keeps the bait in place but you do catch a lot of fish off the back of that and that's your main catching hook there I tend to go to a smaller hook on the front here yeah so that's uh, an 05 and that's an 03. These then can have the bait mounted, which should do a video about mounting bait, onto there. And they can then hang onto the front of your tripod here. But I'm not attaching itself to it. So you've got your bait mounted on there and they just sit right on the front of this, like we spoke about before. Which means that you've got rigs already set up, ready to go. We'll put that over there a second. So in that bag there, I can keep my spare rigs, hook lengths, my cutting board, my frozen bait, and other rigs and bits and pieces. Now, the other thing I needed as well was baiting tools. It's the kinds of things it's the kind of things you don't think about when you actually start fishing. This little tool here will do a video on that as well. It's for mounting two like sand heels, sand heels on. Let me get a rig to illustrate that for you. So 
So what you've got, imagine that your, your sand eels are going to slide on there. You slide the sand eels head first up to these little beads that are here. One at each, at each end. It could be any kind of bait, that's just an example, which is a sand eel. And you mount your first bait, baited hook, hook bait should I say, onto this point here, like so. Alright, hold it back here. Your sand eels are already in place. And then, you're in a situation where you can bind up the bait onto your rig using some of this stuff. Now this is... Uh, I used to use cotton years ago, this is bait and elastic. This hat actually helps keep all the rig tied up tight to stop crabs and that kind of thing from attacking the bait. That's what that does. So we'll do a video on that. So you need baiting tools. So that's another thing you need, that's a dual baiting tool. And we've got other baiting tools, long ones, thin ones, different things. That's imperative that you get some of that as well, that's your, your bait elastic. That stays into this point here which then leads me nicely on to put that there a disgorger a lot of these fish for sea fishing are like pike if you're a coarse angler they've got teeth and they've got quite sharp little bites you need disgorger this is a steel disgorger there's different kinds you can use, you can even use pliers, long nose pliers, but I bought this one. I got this from the uh, the shack which was on the, the in Wallasey. Uh, thanks Richie if you're watching this video. Um, so I got that from there. About five quid. All this mounts up, right? So you've got these little bits of tools like that. You get them for about a tenner, for about eight, nine, ten of them, whatever they are. You've got your hooks and bits and pieces. Right, we'll get on to the next bit that I needed. I needed a tackle box. In the tackle box, this becomes your toolkit for sea fishing. It's imperative that you start buying all the kit. Now, there's a lot of kit that are bought in there now. So you've got like crimping tools. This is a cord, a crimping tool. And it's the same tool that you use for sea fishing, pipe fishing, uh, and tying lures. I've got that. I bought a sea fishing one again, I got that from the shack which is like uh, for doing the crimps so we're going to do videos about crimps that kind of thing how to tie them up then we've got loads of bits and pieces like beads in there beads swivels hooks these are 5 -oh hooks these are yellow label ones so you can get cheaper ones you need braid scissors you need hook sharpening vices for making sure your hooks are, are sharp just like in coarse fishing you need the sharp hooks then we needed the Hook length material, amnesia, so I've got £25, £30, because the, the kind of fishing I'm going for is moderate sized fish. Then you've got all the different mackerel feathers. Feathers are important for getting your, your bait. Then we get long baiting needles, like so. That's like a little needle, which has got a point on one end, and it's got a little open end to put your hooks into. <sighs> the list goes on and on and on. When I did the crab fishing, I realised I needed these little pop-up beads, so I'll go single hook, popping them up, a little bit like a zig rig in carp fishing. Then you need all the snap links, that's an over slap snap links there, and Gemini, and these are crimps to crimp onto the line to create rigs. I'm going to do loads of videos on rigs that I learn as I go along, then I've got these... Uh, Oiky hooks for instance there, these are a, a 4-0, then we've got some more hooks, you can imagine there's a lot to buy, there's a lot to buy, yeah, and all this is all the stuff I'm going to go through in different videos of the kind of rigs that I'm going to be using for sea fishing, that's the tackle box, in a snapshot, okay so that's that, so that's one part of the rig, so you need a tackle box, Keep it slim and light to go in your tackle box. You don't want something that's too big. Why do I say that? I'll explain. You've got to keep mobile. And when you go to these big massive tackle boxes you see for a tenner, which fold up on a counter lever, they're too big. Keep it nice, compact. So that can be put into a rucksack if I'm not taking the big box with me. So can the freezer bait bag there 
that can be put into a rucksack as well all right that can even mount on there like so so i can even tie my rigs without getting down and getting my knees wet the other aspect of sea fishing is is that it stinks absolutely uncategorically sea fishing smells you've got the baits the rigs so make sure you've got plenty of wet wipes cloths and that kind of thing are imperative you need that kind of thing also make sure you take some little rubber gloves like that and that helps keep the smell down that now stinks but that also helps with casting and handling a fish one of the next most important things you're going to have to find is a rig one this is this is from sonic this is what i bought i think this is about 18 quid keep all your rigs nice and clean and, and in little parcels like that so in here i've got all the rigs that i need pulley rigs oh you know pulley panels they call them um flapper rigs we're going to do videos and all these kind of rigs everything that's in here i'm going to do videos on it because literally i've been studying this hard for four weeks watching loads of videos putting it into practice and learning my fishing and i've already had some good results so off the back of that make sure you get rigs tied and ready to go that's imperative because as i found in the last few weeks when you're starting to scratch around in this tackle box yeah and i mean scratch around you're going to be struggling to fish effectively especially the winds blowing there's sand in your eyes it's raining uh the sea's coming in at you uh, or leaving and you've got to do a lot of leg work to get where you need to get to so it's about keeping things mobile you may notice that the tackle box fits on here neatly it just pops on there i can work from the tackle box at the side of my rod and work effectively this pops straight on the top of that as well so i can work effectively off the tackle box let's move that over there to see it a bit more so that works effectively off the tackle box the next most important thing is you need backup line from the session that we just looked at in the last video talks about being stripped so i'm using shallow spools on shallow spools um if you get something big and untoward you know you could get stripped so i did get stripped twice and uh, i've learned now to keep 20 pound line in there so i've got 20 pound line there i'll keep that in my tackle box all the time so that could be done for rotten bottoms or a rotten bottom is like a, a brake link underneath your lead so that's for your rotten bottoms i use ultima power flex which is there that's so i can make me um a pulley rigs that kind of thing up you know rig body that's that and then i have absolutely shed load of braid okay 60 pound braid then leads these can be quite expensive that's a, a hook sharpening tool that i keep in there so keep things nice and neat if you've got no tide you need like four ounce five ounce six ounce leads this is a zip let zip, zip like kind of a lead there you need plenty of leads so if there's no tide and it's just an open beach and there's not much current just use a normal lead like that that's fine but then you've got another current you need that kind of thing all right so i've been fishing the river mersey the mouth to the mersey and it's got some really big tides in there so i need anything from five ounce up to eight ounce and sometimes even at eight ounce it's not strong enough um just move somewhere else because you're not going to do it so you need some breakaway leads and how these work is when they get caught up in the sand and you come to bring it back they, they drop back so you need a little container with plenty of leads i bought most of my leads from ebay and i bought some from the tackle shops the one you get ones you get from your tackle shops like that and that are really nice but then i bought some online like that which are a lot cheaper they're about a pound of lead where these are about one pound eighty even to like three quid a lead depending on which lead you get it can become quite expensive smaller leads you'll need them as well for your feathers work your feather work around the leg around the uh the rocks should i say so that's the kind of stuff on there that you need i keep most of my leads in the back of my van so i keep 
enough for a short session if i lose any and i get short or something then it's only a quick trip back to the van to get some new leads but there's some weight in that so leads heavy as we all know and that stays in the tackle box spare spools imperative that you got spools already spooled in case the worst happens and you get shredded uh, and your line gets damaged so both these here i've got some braid on so i had a fish with 25 pound not 25 15 pound mono with a shot leader when it's an open beach and it's there's no obstacles or then it'll drop up to 60 pound uh, i don't like fishing at range when there's a lot of uh debris in the water you know things that can snarl you up so i tend to go a lot shorter on 60 pound braid uh, with a rotten bottom on the bottom of that that's the link so i'll talk about those kind of rigs in, in, at, at a later date head torches one thing you'll need to buy is lighters head torches as in two take two or three head torches with you because if one fails and it's late at night you'll need it but you'll also need a torch to go shine in front here a proper torch as well when you're walking back at night time that pretty much covers that element of it rods now that is a big subject rods is a big subject The first thing I wanted to do when I got a rod was to hunt the internet, go into tackle shops and with living in Manchester, trust me, trust me, there's not a lot of options around Manchester for sea fishing tackle. Um, and so if you can comment below if you can find a good sea fishing tackle shop around Manchester for instance, drop a link down there. I live in Oldham just outside of Manchester. So. The reason why I contacted Akios was because of that very reason. There wasn't not a lot of choice around Manchester. Uh, tackle shops don't store sea fishing tackle because we're about an hour and a half away from the sea. Which is really mental because if this was America, if I was 30 miles from the sea, I'd be rel relatively close to the sea. And you know, you don't live that far away from the sea, so you go sea fishing. But in England, I'm near the Pennines. So I'm nearly in the middle of England. So it's only like 80 miles from coast to coast longer it's different parts of england but you get the general idea don't you in that direction it's an hour and a half to the east coast in that direction it's an hour to the west coast so i can literally go from coast to coast in two and a half hours from manchester which is absolutely bloody brilliant if you're into sea fishing because then i've got access to do two different coastlines rods we heart back to that I couldn't find anything and <coughs> the videos that are seen online um it was like i'm going off people's words and people watch videos because they want to find out which would be best for them luckily for me one of my friends did some graphic design work and designed all the logos and that kind of thing for him not all of them but some of them and it gave me a heads up on a brand which was on my doorstep which was actually believe it or not in Manchester which was Simon and Simon who owns Akios said to me what do you need so the first thing I needed was a rod that was capable for me to fish generally if I need to to about 150 160 yards with a baited hook and I can do that with this quite easily so he sent out the first one he sent to me was the Utopia 420. Now this isn't a cheap rod, all right? It's about 270 quid. I paid costs for it, but it's 270 quid. I still bought it under his recommendations. So I've now used this for a week, two weeks, three weeks, three weeks. A surf rod, okay? It's a continental three piece rod. I cannot find fault. What people find as a fault, I look as a positive. And what I mean by that is that I've got quite long arms. 
right i've got a long reach so doing boxing I was very good at boxing I had a long reach which was perfect for me which meant that this real seat was actually the right length for me because i've got long arms a lot of people like the real seat to be slide up and down but because i've got long arms that was actually set perfect for me believe it or not okay so you need to make sure that's imperative that the real seat is in the right place for you so that was in the right place three-piece construction i have no problem with three-piece construction if they're done right and then when you look at the way they're built on the construction they're bang on there's nothing wrong with them the tip is a nice tip section the bottom section so you've got a japanese shrimp wrap there and you've got a little construction there at the bottom of the real seat which is perfect as you can see there for gripping all right everything from fishing comes through the left hand the right hand is only a guiding hand it's, it's elevated and you come through in that kind of motion even you come through the side it's that that is built up superbly correct for sea fishing and the rod work really really well the only thing that people don't like about this who are sea anglers is it's very thin which means it's a lot like a carp rod trust me don't let the appearance of that rod put you off and buying that rod because that is a very very good rod and i'm not going to go in a tournament casting no interest in that whatsoever i know my limits and i know what i want to do and that tick the boxes so simon you've got that absolutely bang on there's nothing wrong with that so that's that that's that first one there put that in there so that's the utopia 420 that's a very good rep recommendation right only because of circumstance i'm using that but i'm really happy with that there's loads of rods out there and i don't have a clue about them so if you can recommend a good rod downstairs in the comment section on this youtube channel please fill it in accordingly to let people know and understand what they need from their sea fishing so that's my choice now the utopia there's another one which you've got here which is the fury again it's not budgeted at a budget rod you can get a c rod which is for about 40 quid 20 quid or whatever it may well be but it's the construction of that rod will be very poor you only get what you pay for and the blank will be very wide and with using that in mind this fury is a lot thicker and it's built just right for me again right which is a fury fx 420 this is a kit rod it comes with a matching reel as well you can buy the two independently but this comes with a very 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 good budget end 60 quid reel i say budget you can get cheaper reels but for the construction and the workability of this reel it marries up with this rod superbly well i can't fault it now you think 60 quid for a reel are you going to get a good line lay now i like to cast and i like the line lay to be right and now some people might feel this is over overfilled but that's just the if you can see there that's just a little bit proud of the lip right that's because i'm going to be distance fishing with that one all right that what's on there is the leader once you get past the leader on a mono mono 20 15 mil 15 pound mono so that's built up for distance when you're on the sea and the beach you might get a lot more wind and stuff and it becomes an issue which means that that might be overfilled depending on the style of fishing that you're doing right so now can you see that reel really good line lay 60 quid reel real really good line lay so i think you can get the rod and reel for about 190 180 the fury now if i was coming new into sea fishing which i am doing but i have a good understanding of rods that 420 y is a really good rod for what you're going to be doing you're not a, be uh, a tournament caster you're not a match angler you're not like a holiday angler you're getting into it a little bit more serious but you want something that's fit for purpose the construction of the rod is very similar but on a wider bore than the utopia fishing them side by side the utopia is a better rod but there's nothing wrong with this rod it's a really good rod the, the rings and the guides are really well made the rod is fit for purpose 
aesthetically it looks nice it's been done with a machine because it was done by hand by a man those little gaps in the whipping they wouldn't be there little gaps not much but it's a secondary whipping not the first the primary whipping if you can look at that is comes right the way through so there's a secondary and primary whipping on that yeah i'm happy with that the way the amount of uh, varnish on there is plenty right one of the biggest problems a lot of man rod manufacturers is they don't put enough varnish on so is it constructed correctly yeah it is for it is for the money you're paying for it it's a good rod you've got this casting handle again with the japanese shrink wrap on there which fits perfectly on your hand and that little knob you'll there uh, just helps you get a good grip and again everything comes through what you're doing is you're pulling into your chest okay bang that's what you're doing with that kind of casting technique so that was the rod the reel i've got that the fury fx8 so i also then went for a reel as well to go to match up with the utopia by recommendations from simon and he come up with this okay this is the utopia reel now the strange thing about this reel is the utopia looks very similar to a cart rod except it's more funky it's more designed and decorated like a formula one racing car with signs and badges all over the thing but this reel here could pass quite easily as a cart reel now i would use these for cart fishing all day long and they're about 160 quid yeah got a folding handle on them so you can fold everything up they work fine quick release drag on the front and so does the Fura reel as a quick release drag on there as well which would be perfect for a spod reel for my course fishing I always use Shimano right or for a while I did some work with ProLogic and they sent me out some uh, ProLogic bits and pieces right so I've got a dot dot x or whatever it is spod x dot x spod reel and a few other bits and pieces that is a really good reel my only main concern is I'd like it to be a hundred pound era with more bits and pieces on that. So a better handle for instance. Yeah. Uh, instead of this black here, I sooner have a stainless steel bail arm which doesn't mark or chip. And I pay the extra hundred quid for that to happen, to be perfectly honest. I have it a little bit more robust because carp anglers do put their kit through some beasting and they want them look a little bit bling but regarding the carp reel my personal opinion only that's a good carp reel and a sea reel there's nothing wrong with that this is loaded up with 60 pound braid which is a very thin diameter braid i can't remember where i got it from but i've looked at the braids and i'm going to decathlon that was it i got this braid from decathlon so it was good for casting quick spool really spool on the front like i just said and that pairs up nicely with that now as you can imagine all this would cost money and i think i spent in total if we pay full retail for everything to get me up and running with a medium type setup with your rigs and your bits and pieces um i'll be then pulling in about 1300 quid got me set up now that may seem a lot break that down to cart fishing on my cart fishing videos i have a titan 799 pound i've got three uh Sh shimano uh high-end reels which are 280 pound each that's just a bivy and that's just the three reels then they got the alarms it's 450 quid my cart fishing setup is nearly ten thousand pound my setup for sea fishing is about 1300 quid I could go even higher and you and the only thing that goes higher on the stuff that I've got to be perfectly honest I could go for like kind of century rods and century reels and I can go high end on the casting side of it but the fundamentals of sea fishing is a hell of a lot cheaper than cart fishing can I do one video about sea fishing now I'm getting more understanding of it and no god this is a big encyclopedia of knowledge that needs to be taken in and on that point 
this is one of the reasons why I decided to do the sea fishing videos as well as the cat fishing videos because there's a lot to learn and there's more content for me to to go at so I've literally scratched the surface done nothing more except for scratch this surface in sea fishing but I'm happy with the kit that I've got now one thing that stuck to me by a friend of mine said when you actually look at the tackle look at some of the match lads and some of their kit is years and years and years old and it looks like they've bought it in a car boot sale but they're very good anglers so it's not about what you cat tackle you're using but it's about the quality of the kit and the person that's using it on that note i'll see you on the next video